I'm Brendan, and today I'm going to be presenting Discrete, which is a, a memory forensics tool to automatically render forensic information from memory images, and it's all based on application logic reuse. This work is joint with my lab mate, Junshu Gu, as well as my two advisors, Professor Shen Yu Zhang and Professor Dong Yan Shu. All four of us are from Purdue University. I'd like to start this morning off a little different with a story based on true events that happened at Purdue University. Ooh. Excuse me. Computer's been sitting idle too long. Based on some true events that happened at Purdue University. So a few semesters ago, a student was caught changing grades for his friends and even some accomplices who may have paid him for this service. So let's imagine that this cyber crime is unfolding right here in front of us. The criminal is actively changing these grades on an official university grade report. But notice, before he can save this document that he's editing, law enforcement agents arrive. Bad for him. They image the computer's memory, seize the physical machine as evidence, and return to the forensics lab. Now back at the forensics lab, investigators are going to use Discrete to uncover that PDF that he was in the process of editing frozen in the computer's memory image. And let me note here that uncovering this edited PDF is vital to the investigation because investigators are going to compare this with the original copy still on disk. This comparison is going to give the investigators the proof they need to tie the accomplices to this crime. The state of the art in memory forensics is really good at uncovering and returning to investigators raw data structure instances that are within a memory image. Believe it or not, this is that PDF we were just looking at in raw data structure form. You can see the problem. Investigators still face non-trivial manual effort to understand the content of these data structures such as what this PDF actually looks like. And that's even if decoding this data structure is possible for human investigators at all. And the same situation arises for many different types of digital evidence, such as images, passwords, or formatted or encoded data. We define this as the content reverse engineering problem in memory forensics. And discrete is designed to overcome that challenge. We observe that an application which defines a data structure, such as that PDF we just saw, also contains printing or rendering logic for that data structure. Let's call this application logic the P function. The P function should transform that raw in-memory data structure into some human understandable application output. So for a running example, let's look at this example code of the PDF editor application we just saw. So you can see it defines a struct PDF data structure, and then it's going to load that PDF file in from disk and allocate and initialize one of these data structures in its memory. The main loop allows the user to make some edits to the PDF, and then the save PDF file function is going to format that data structure into a nice human understandable PDF file and save that file's contents to disk. Discrete aims to reuse this logic to build a scanner plus renderer tool. The intuition here is that that P function is going to perform various parsing and formatting on that input data structure. And so when presenting P with invalid input, we can expect P to crash. Based on this intuition, we want to present every offset within a suspect's memory image to this P function. Eventually, we'll hit that valid data structure instance within the memory image. And for that, P is going to render the natural application output that would have been generated using the data frozen in that memory image. So to actually build one of these scanner plus renderer tools, 
forensic lab staff is first going to recover a binary they're interested in from the suspect's computer. This is usually done with an image of the machine's hard drive that's given during the investigation. Investigators are then going to use Discrete to build that scanner plus renderer tool from that target binary. The Discrete platform consists of two dynamic analysis steps, and these two steps are just a one-time cost to generate that scanner plus renderer tool. That tool can then be reused in all of the future investigations of that same app. So let's look at these two steps real quick. The first step, the investigator is going to execute that binary from the suspect's computer, and slicing techniques are going to be used to find the entire printing rendering component within that application. During this, the investigator only needs to mark which output functions that application used to emit the evidence they're interested in. So for example, they would want to mark the F write in that PDF editor that saved the PDF file to disk. Meanwhile, Discrete is going to be saving memory snapshots periodically of that running application. These are going to be used in step two. In step two, Discrete has to find the entry point to that P logic. Because remember, in the slice, the printing rendering component is going to be a tremendous portion of the application. We just want to reuse a little bit. So to find this entry point, we're going to want to test candidates for the entry point. So Discrete is going to automatically identify instructions in that larger printing rendering component to test as candidates for this entry point. Discrete identifies candidates based on two criteria. First, it should be an instruction that takes as input a pointer to some data in the heap. And second, all of those selected output functions must be dependent on this entry point candidate in the program slice. The goal here is that by changing the data structure pointer used by that candidate, we can accurately change the output created by this P function. So to actually perform this step, the investigator is going to execute the binary one more time. And in the background, Discrete is going to be testing each of these entry point candidates using a process that we call cross-state execution. This is where that memory image that we took in step one comes in. During cross-state execution, Discrete is going to selectively and automatically force the application to assess data in both its new memory session as well as the memory session frozen in that memory image. And we're going to see exactly how that works with an example. So here we have again our PDF editor software. And let me note that our discussion is on the, so the, the, the source code level, but Discrete only requires binaries in order to run. And you can notice Discrete has identified that invocation to the save PDF file function as an entry point candidate. So the investigator will start executing this program, and it's going to read in the investigator's test PDF and allocate and initialize those PDF data structures, which are here pointed to by the my PDF pointer. The main loop is going to execute using those new data structures that the application just allocated, and then the investigator is going to try to save the PDF. Here's where it's going to hit that entry point candidate, and this marks the beginning of cross-state execution. To begin cross-state execution, Discrete is going to perform two quick steps. First, it's going to map that memory snapshot that we took in step one into the application's memory session. And then it's going to swap that my PDF pointer to use the data structures frozen in that memory snapshot. So you can see the remainder of that save PDF file function will execute using the frozen step one data structures. It's going to format those data structures and then output a PDF file based on the data structures frozen in that memory image from step one. So the key observation here is that a correct candidate for that P entry point should recreate the PDF we saw in step one. It's also important to note here that the input supplied to step two should obviously be different from the input that we previously used in step one. 
This is to easily differentiate between output that's generated from the new application data structures versus the ones that are frozen in that memory snapshot. So once discrete has identified a correct entry point candidate, it's gonna package that candidate into a scanner plus renderer tool to reuse that P logic that we're interested in. The scanner plus renderer tool also works using cross state execution. It works just like we talked about previously, where it's gonna present every offset within a suspect's memory image to that P logic. And then any application output that is naturally generated gets reported to the investigator as evidence. And again, the scanner plus renderer tools are reusable now and can be distributed to various field investigators to be used in different investigations of this same app. So let's get back to that cyber crime story and see just how discrete is gonna help the investigators here. So back at the forensics lab, the investigators are gonna to wanna to use discrete to build a scanner plus renderer tool for that PDF editor application. They've already extracted the binary from the suspect's hard drive, and they're gonna execute this PDF editor with just a simple test PDF. They're gonna perform some simple modifications, and in the background, Discrete is gonna be tracing the execution and saving those periodic memory snapshots to be used later. Once they save the PDF, and close the application. Now we're gonna review that log of output functions that the application used. We're gonna to wanna to mark, again, the output functions that we notice saved that PDF file to disk. A quick scroll through this log shows the investigator that all of the logged output functions actually wrote that PDF file on disk, and so we're just gonna leave all of these marked for discrete. Now for step two. The investigator is gonna re-execute that binary in step two with a different test input PDF. I don't know if you can see it on the terminal if the font is too small, but discrete actually identifies 46 entry point candidates in this application. But notice, the investigator never needs to see any of these candidates. They're all being tested automatically in the background by discrete using that cross state execution and the memory image that it took in step one. So again, just make some simple modifications and save and close. And once this step is over, we wanna go ahead and check which of those candidates actually produced any output. So six of the candidates produced output. The first candidate is invalid because it saved the step two PDF. Then the next two candidates are also invalid because they just produced garbage PDFs. But finally we notice the remaining three candidates are all valid. They actually recreated the PDF that we used in step one. That means this PDF was generated using those frozen data structures in the memory snapshot that was taken by discrete during step one. So now discrete is gonna package one of those correct entry point candidates into a scanner plus renderer tool. Again, this tool can now be used in this investigation and all future investigations of that app. And we're gonna use it right now to scan that memory image that police took when they walked in on that cyber crime earlier. This prototype of discrete just requires that we execute the binary to get to the entry point to that P logic. So the investigator is gonna do that and once it gets to that entry point, discrete is gonna take over execution and begin that memory image scanning. So it begins scanning, and 30 minutes later, we can go ahead and review the results of the memory image scan. So from that memory image, as we expected, only one PDF was generated, and it is indeed the PDF with the higher grades that the criminal was in the process of editing when the police walked in on him. And so just to remind you, without discrete, the state of the art is getting these raw data structure instances out of the memory image. And so 
this real PDF that the investigators can look at and visually see gives them the proof they need to connect all of the accomplices with this cybercrime. So we didn't just test discrete with PDFs. We also used a variety of types of digital evidence, all which require content reverse engineering to uncover their uh, actual evidence. We did things like several image processors, as well as GNOME Screenshot, the default screenshotting application on most Linux distributions, request logs from an Nginx HTTP server, as well as PDFs as seen here, process data rendered with the top utility, even vector graphics drawn in the XFIG application, and then some others that you can see on this table. As you can see, in almost all cases, Discrete is perfectly accurate at finding and rendering this type of digital evidence. That is, no false positives and no false negatives. If you're interested in the few cases that do have false results, I'd be glad to talk to you about, off about that offline. And also, if you're curious about the performance of one of these discrete generated scanner plus renderer tools, I can direct you to the paper where we show all of that data, but our collaborators in the digital forensics practice let us know that all of these tools are well within the time frame for such an investigation. So in conclusion, in our paper and in this talk, I've shown you we have identified the content reverse engineering challenge in memory forensics, and then designed discrete to leverage binary application logic reuse to automatically locate data structures in a memory image and render their content for investigators. Our evaluation shows Discrete to be highly effective at recovering many different forms of digital evidence. And finally, Discrete is still in its infancy, and so there are still lots of opportunities to apply and improve Discrete with different investigations. As well as our future research efforts, we look to push the limits on what we can do with content reverse engineering. And so with that, I thank you very much for listening, and I'm open to take questions. If you have questions, please come up to the mic. So please also state your name and affiliation. Thank you, C. Berkeley. There was one stage where the investigator had to manually review a list of functions and decide which ones to keep. Mm -hmm. How would this work for script binaries where there are no function names? How difficult would it be to assess the function? So that's definitely, uh, so, so let me answer your question in two parts. So first, discrete uh, doesn't rely on symbols for the binary. So if the binary itself doesn't have the you know, function names and things, we can still present the investigator with a log of the functions as well as the arguments supplied to those. For things like interpreted languages, discrete has to overcome that level of indirection between the actual execution and what the interpreter is doing. So the current prototype of discrete can't handle interpreted applications, but that's definitely in the future work of content reverse engineering. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kent from the University of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. I just have a question for you regarding how um, discrete works sure. in conjunction with um, ASLR. In particular, if the data structures contain, say, callback functions to application logic and the main executable has been randomized in some sense via ASLR, how, how do you interact with that? That's a really good question because we actually encounter data structures that have function pointers back to the application. So the, way, the, the, the key point here is that ASLR is perfectly okay on the suspect's computer. But when the investigator himself is building these discrete scanner plus render tools, he has to turn off ASLR so that the step one and two memory images can be meshed together. But once that scanner plus render tool is generated, that P function can be easily reused even in the presence of ASLR, you know, within the suspect's memory image. Thank you. Sure, yeah, thanks. David Jacobson from Qualcomm. Yeah. Um, you have assumed that you have a, a perfectly recovered image. Uh, how robust is this? Let's suppose that the, the police, because of something or other, only get like 90% of the image correct. I'm sorry, you mean the memory image? Yeah, the memory image. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So discrete works by presenting each offset in the suspect's memory image to that P function. The only thing that it needs in order to do that is the mapping information for those pages. So even if some of the pages are missing, as long as we have the paging data structures, we're able to you know, go through and present each offset. Now, if, the P, if you're so unlucky that the paging data structures within the kernel are the thing that's destroyed, you can then use other tools such as um, dim sum is a paper from NDSS a while ago that can figure out the, the, the paging situation in a memory image when those data structures are destroyed. Okay, so Thank let's you. thank the speaker once more.